It's early Tuesday morning, game day. And before the boys get on the bus to Clemson, they first take care of schoolwork back on campus by heading to early classes and fulfilling study hall hours. Go and make sure that uh, we're on top of things. He um, makes sure we do uh, study hall hours on the coach and stuff, and um, making sure we're up to date with our homework, and he always enforces that. The college soccer season is a long, grueling campaign. Many of the boys seek treatment for those minor bumps and bruises. Obviously, we, we have um, a lot of games in a short space of time, so that really does affect uh, your body. Uh, it's a lot different to what I'm used to. I mean, in England, you, um, you play once a week, you play every weekend, and you play right through the year, whereas here, you only play till, um, well, hopefully, into December when we reach the uh, NCAA tournament. While the players are in classes and seeking treatment, the coaches are hard at work preparing for that night's contest. But first, a cup of tea is in order to get the day off right. I always fill the cups. I always do all the work around here. Got the water. I feel a little under pressure to make a good cup of tea right now. I've never been watched so carefully. Best team in the world. After Charlotte. Uh, we generally meet late morning where we'll just kind of go through what we've been talking about as far as what we're looking for out of our opponents, what we're looking for more importantly out of our players and our team, what we're going to be focusing on and what we're going to be trying to do. When players do start arriving, Gunn makes sure to post the latest NCAA rankings outside the locker room as a subtle reminder of where the boys are at in the national landscape. And when the players do arrive at the field house, a certain player's new haircut draws a lot of attention. No. I do miss the hair No. No. I do look good though, guys. The people want a John Legend. Okay. No. It looks terrible. That's it looks nice. horrible. That's what I thought too. What do you mean? You need to get don't cut your hair next time. You know, we get the food ready so the pregame stuff's ready for the guys. We like to take care of them. We're real high on the preparation and nutrition for the players, and so that's important. And then, you know, we're always looking at uh, kind of what sort of um, what sort of feel we're going to get from the players. A, a midweek game when they've been in class and they've been doing that is very different than, say, a Friday night game where you know they're not in classes most of them, and so they get all day to look forward to it, and they're naturally more energized. While the players grab some grub, trainer Adam Jordan is busy preparing equipment, medical supplies, and making that all-important mixture of Gatorade for the trip. After tightening up some loose ends, the boys finally load the bus for the short two-hour journey to Clemson, South Carolina. When they load the bus, they count off to make sure all are aboard. One! Yeah. Not here. Four! Five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-seven, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. We're good. We're good to go, sir. You know, on the bus journeys, if, if we go in the day of a game, it's a bit of relaxation time where they get to just visualize, they get to prepare, they get to gather their own thoughts and think about what they're going to do. And then, um, you know, then when we start to get closer to the ground, we're then looking at raising the tempo a little bit. I think you're, uh, you're privy to some of the wonderful dance sort of music we often have on the bus, which is, which is great. I particularly like that. There's definitely not going to be any country going on the way to the game. The short trip to Clemson goes off without a hitch. The bus pulls into the back lot of historic Riggs Field, and the boys seem focused on the task at hand. And then, you know, you get to the ground, then it's okay, go and check out the field, see what sort of conditions it's going to be. And then, you know, then the, the energy level starts to get raised. Um, and in the locker room before the game, it's, it's talking about those last few ideas that we want to make sure that they go into the game within their minds. And then, then it's warm up time where Kevin and Kyle do a great job getting the guys going. Music is a, is a big way to uh, get us pumped up for a game. Uh, we listen to um, a lot of house music, which is uh, a 
think Glenn's influence, uh, maybe some of the English lads. And um, that, that's one of the ways that we get pumped up, yeah. The moments before a game can oftentimes be the most tense. Every player has his own individual way to prepare. And in the locker room, the 49ers share that moment together as one unit, as Gunn sheds last minute wisdom. Attacking wise, guys, first ten. We put it all in a couple of times. Channels for the strikers are going to be running, going to be looking, okay? This is the night where if we put the ball in the right spot, you can have jumps on these players. Not a big, strong team. It's a team that we can overpower, we can get in there. And again, what we've talked about in the past, can we get the goal off a set piece? Can we be in the plus column off set piece tonight? <laughs> Then, in like an old-fashioned boxing match, the fighters touch gloves, the bell rings, and it's go time. High kick goes to the backside, but it also hooks up and on top of the net. So we'll chip it into the zone. High kick that is headed away. The 49ers will control there. Move it down to the end line and then now across centering pass and a good shot on goal and a nice one-handed save there by Mozo. Sends the bender across far side of the goal. Ball is headed up and then it is headed in on a second header. And so 49ers break out on front. And headed in, I believe, by Will Mayhew. Chipping it into the penalty box, but there is Davis with the save. Yes, but not able to do so. Touched out front and then one time towards the goal. Mozo gets his hands on it, then gets up off the grass. It's extra work. You were almost there when you went on TJ. Over the back press. I want you there, so we attack. Same with everything. Okay, we're going to hit it big, guys. Okay, let's get We've got to figure out as a midfield if it's coming from a fullback, okay, why did he step in? I think when it comes into there, how many oranges are in there, guys? There's a lot, and, and we've just been lazy. We've been lazy. Oh, we're okay. We're not okay. We're winning the first. We've got to win the second. Understand? Otherwise, it's dropping in here, and they'll play, guys. They'll go at you. And meanwhile, there's five or six of them. Real simple. Okay? Now, a couple of other things. When they play feet, play feet, we can get into them and try and win. Yeah? It's going to be cleared over. Bennett Dixon shot on goal. Got it. Pushing it forward, trying to get a rush on net. Now coming out front, right footed shot on goal. It will slide just high and over. Oh, a good opportunity there. Just to chip it up. Far side. Deflected out front, kicked in, and then kicked in again by the Niners. That ball got loose out front, deflected a couple of times, and finally banged in the net by the Niners, and I believe it was number five, Thomas Allen. Here is going to be Evan James. Far side, lines up a shot on goal and good. And so with just 3.52 left, Evan James knocks it in the back of the net to make it 3-1 Charlotte. And that was a backbreaker there. Very, very happy with the result. It was a game that um, yeah, very easily go either way in the middle of the second half. And uh, the great thing about our team there, we'd had our chances to put the game away. We didn't manage to. They get back in could go either way and our boys had that resolve and we just kept going and in the end we win the game 3-1 and we're, we're happy with a, another great road victory. Don't forget the tat on the end. Yeah. The result is in and a win always brings happiness to the group. After the game the boys quickly shower up, load the bus and head back to the Queen City. It's, it's good, you know, and, and 
really, if, if, you just, if you're always just looking at being happy if you win, sad if you lose, then I think you're kind of missing the point. Um, what we try and teach our players is to have that level-headed approach where, okay, what were you trying to achieve today? And then afterwards you say, did you achieve it? Now, the outcome of the game, the way we look at it is if we've got great players, uh, we think we do the right things tactically, we, we try and get our players to do the right things in a game. And so if we can just get them to focus on their individual jobs and how their job fits into the, the team strategy, then they don't really have to worry so much about the result. My hope is that you know, we'll be winning games on the soccer field, which is great. But more importantly, the, the student athletes here are going to have the four best years of their lives. And uh, you know, in 10, 20 years time, some of their best friends who they always talk to are going to be the guys that they've shared four years of college with. The 49ers finally arrive back on campus early Wednesday morning, where the team gathers one last time before departing for the night. Shut up, three, one, two, three, shut up! Ah!